Hi everybody, it's James at dreamweavertutorial.co.uk and today we're going to be looking to create this CSS tab navigation menu. Each link creates an illusion of a new tab when clicked upon. There are also various hover rollover effects which are fully customizable and you can also choose whether to have rounded tabs or squared tabs. Okay, so let's go into Dreamweaver. Now I have already defined a new site in Dreamweaver. I've called it tab menu and I've given it a CSS folder and an images folder. Now what I'm going to do is create a blank HTML 1.0 transitional uh, web page and I'm going to split the screen. I'm going to go into the body tags and we're going to start building our navigation menu. Now I'm going to create a div which is going to wrap around the whole of the menu and this is for you to use to install it into your website. So I'm going to give it an ID of navbar, so div ID equals navbar. And the only thing we're going to define in the CSS for this navbar div is a width attribute, a width property. Okay, so inside of navbar, we're going to cr start creating our menu. So I'm going to call it div with an ID of holder because this is going to hold an unordered list which we're going to turn into a horizontal tab navigation menu. Okay, so let's start creating that unordered list now. So I'm going to open and close a UL tag. So it's open angle bracket UL and closing UL tag and inside of the unordered list we're going to put a list item tag so that's the li tag and inside of the list item tag we're going to place an href link so here's the li and closing li i'm going to type href equals and uh, i'm going to close that link tag and then i'm going to put a hash inside to create a null link okay so we're going to copy and paste the whole of this list item so you can press Control C, highlight, press Control C, and then press Control D, and that will copy and paste it as many times as you like. Okay, so pause the screen if you need to, but this is pretty much all of the HTML we are going to use in this tutorial to create our horizontal tab navigation menu. So pause the screen if you need to, and make sure you've got exactly what I've got here. And you should see in design view as well, some empty bullets. That's because we haven't populated our link tags yet. So I'm gonna start doing that now. I'm gonna type home products, services. Um, I'm gonna have a link called gallery, and a link called contact. So let's click inside design view or press refresh, and you'll see that the list items have been populated in design view. And we're going to get to work on the CSS now. We need to take out the default bullet list items and the text decoration. So if you go up to the navbar div and place your cursor in anywhere inside of that navbar div, and if you go over to the CSS styles panel, there'll be a button to click to create a new CSS rule. So we're going to create a new CSS rule, define it in a new style sheet file. And I've got my folder already uh, set up inside uh, of the tab menu folder called CSS and we're called the CSS tab menu as well. So I'm gonna press save and that should create our CSS document. I'm gonna click OK and I'm gonna click just beside the source code and go in and hand code the CSS from there. Okay, now with the navbar selector that I've just created, um, this is essentially just gonna have a width property um, assigned to it at the end of the tutorial. But when you copy and paste the menu into your web design, this navbar div is for you to position it. You can add the properties that you need to it to get it to fit into your web design page. Now we're gonna target the unordered list inside of the holder div. So I'm gonna type in pound navbar, pound holder, UL, and uh, the open and closing curly braces. And the first thing we want to do is take out the default list bullets, which are inside of the unordered list. So I'm going to type in a list dash style colon none and a semicolon and press refresh and you'll see that they disappear. And uh, we're going to take out the default margins and padding. So it will make the list items go flush to the side of the div. So I'm going to type in margin colon zero padding colon zero and in those with semicolons and there you go. Now for absolute beginners you see if I click on to the rules here it will bring up the definition dialog box for you and you can see that if you go to the list category it's done exactly what I've typed there set it to none and the box category the padding and margin is zero so that's how you can follow along if you're an absolute beginner. Okay, let's start styling the links inside of the unordered list now. So I'm going to type in pound navbar, pound holder, ULLIA. So that's the, the links inside of the unordered list, 
which are inside of a div called holder and that holder div happens to be inside of a navbar div. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is take out the ugly underline that you see on all the links. So I'm going to type in text-decoration colon none and end that with a semicolon. Now if you press refresh or click inside the design view they disappear and that's fantastic. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to float our list to the left and that will give it a horizontal feel. So there you go, float colon left and if we set a margin right of five pixels that will push all of the text away from each other by five pixels. Now I'm going to change the font family declaration and I want a nice chunky font uh, that we can apply a text shadow to. So I'm going to type in font dash family colon and I'm going to set Arial Black and Gadget Sans Serif. And uh, when you press refresh, there you go, big chunky text. We don't even have to alter the size of the font there. Okay, so I'm going to change the color of the text to black because it's set to the default link blue color. Okay, it's time to put a border around all of the links and I'm going to do a concatenation of a selector. So I'm going to type in border colon one pixel solid and pound zero zero zero. You'll see that the border has been created all the way around. Um, but we're going to override that in the cascade now with a border dash bottom attribute. And I'm going to select that to none. So we're going to end up with a border all the way around apart from on the bottom. And you can see that it's starting to create that tabbed effect already. Okay, the border is a little bit too close to the links, so we're going to set padding all the way around of 20 pixels. Fantastic. And we're going to define a set width for every link. So I'm going to make sure there's 75 pixels each. And um, you've got to remember that that is plus 20 pixels on either side for the padding and uh, two pixels on either side or one pixel on either side for the border. So I'm going to set the text align to center and that will center all of the text and I'm going to set the display property to block and that means that when someone rolls over the link it won't just be on the text that the uh, rollover effect will take place it will be the whole of that 75 pixel radius. Okay so the background I'm going to set to pound 69 f which is a sort of light blue color Okay, so if you look inside Design View now, you'll see we've pretty much finished styling the look of the tabs. Uh, we're about to start styling the um, hover effect for the links now. So we're going to create a new selector, and I'm going to type pound navbar, pound holder, ul, li, a, and colon, hover. So this is what happens when we hover over the link. We're going to set the background color. We want the background color to be. I'm going to put in an orange color. You're welcome to style however, whatever color you want to. So I'm going to put in pound nine zero. I'm going to set the text color to white and I'm going to add a text shadow, one pixel, one pixel, one pixel, and I'm going to set that to black. So pound zero 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 gives it a very faint text shadow there. And I'm going to press refresh. Okay, so I'm going to preview that in Firefox now. Okay, so what we're looking to see now is that the rollover effects are working, so each link should change from a blue to an orange color. So here we are, and yes, it is working, so we know that the hover effect is going to work and that the pseudo selector we selected there is working correctly. Okay, so let's go back into Dreamweaver now and finish styling the rest of the tab navigation menu. Now we need to start creating the illusion of individual tabs. So if I just click inside of the holder div, you'll see that it's collapsed because we floated the list items there, that long horizontal blue line at the top. So what we do is we're going to create a selector which will uh, make that holder div encompass the links themselves. So I'm going to type in pound navbar, pound holder, and we're going to give a height attribute to that holder div. And you can still see it in design view there. So I'm going to type in Hyatt colon 65 pixels and press refresh. And there you go. You can see that it encompasses the whole of the links and the whole nav bar now. Actually, I think we'll make that 64 pixels to make it nice and flush. There we go. Fantastic. Okay, so let's put in a border which will make up the base of the tabs. So I'm going to type in border dash bottom colon and I'm going to set it to one pixel solid and a black and a semicolon on the end. Now press refresh and we'll preview that in a browser. 